I often tell patients that your surgery is an hour, uh, but your care is going to be over a year uh, before you're completely rehabilitated. There's a whole body of literature that demonstrates that active participation in care and rehabilitation is one of the most important factors and outcomes uh, in orthopedic surgery. Complications of immobility can range all the way from minor complications up to more serious complications and even death. Patients who aren't active as they can be in hospital are at risk of complications such as blood clots and pressure ulcers. They're also at risk of things like losing their body mass or being unable to participate in activities they could participate in prior to their hospitalization. The most important thing that older adults can do when they are admitted to the hospital is to make sure that they are getting up, sitting at the side of the bed or in the chair for their meals, but also making sure that they are walking around in the hospital. Most people underestimate the importance of physical activity in their recovery. Exercise doesn't have to be a big event during the day. Little things like going for a walk after you've been up to the bathroom, sitting up whenever anyone comes in to talk with you, or even stretching your arms and your legs in the bed, all add up to help with your recovery. The little things do count. When people are admitted to hospital with illness or injury, they often spend many hours each day in bed. By not participating in normal daily activities in hospital, many patients experience something called functional decline. This is a decline in their ability to do simple things like getting out of bed, using the bathroom, getting dressed, or caring for themselves. Functional decline can be a slippery slope. You begin to lose more and more function as the inactivity continues. This can make it harder for you to return to doing things that you enjoy. Let's look at some common misconceptions about recovering in hospital. Myth number one, resting in bed is the best way to recover. Well, actually, research shows that staying in bed is not the best way to recover, and it can actually make recovery time longer. The time you spend in bed can increase your risk of many serious complications, such as blood clots, muscle weakness, pneumonia, pressure sores, and confusion. The decline in function can begin in as little as 48 hours after admission. Every day of immobility can result in up to a 5% loss in your muscle strength. That really adds up if you're in bed for more than a week. So what can you do? Stay mentally and physically active while you're in the hospital. Those two things will lower your risk of functional decline and help you achieve the best possible outcome. Functional decline can occur in people of all ages, however it's more prevalent in older patients. A loss of strength or function may be the tipping point or last straw to loss of independence and safety. Up to 60% of older people experience functional decline when they're hospitalized. About one third of older adults develop a new disability in their activities of daily living in hospital. This could result in more time spent in hospital. Half of these patients are unable to recover their abilities once they return home. Sometimes these new disabilities prevent them from returning to their own home and they have to find other living arrangements. This decline in function may also contribute to additional medical problems and affect their quality of life. Get active because at the end of the day, nothing's going to heal back your body other than work. Myth number two, moving around will only cause more pain. Actually, moving around and doing gentle exercises will help relieve joint and muscle stiffness. Exercise causes your body to release natural substances called endorphins, which can decrease your pain and anxiety. Good pain management is an important part of your recovery. Be sure to talk to your healthcare team about any concerns you have. When you are more comfortable, it will be easier to move around and you'll be able to use the benefits of mobility. You'll feel the pain, for sure, but you continue to feel better because you're moving and, and healing comes faster when you're moving. I've, I've known that personally for a fact that it does help the healing process when you're active. Another potential risk of prolonged inactivity is the development of delirium. Delirium is a temporary state of confusion. In this state, the patient may not know where they are. They may get their days and nights mixed up and sleep all day. 
They have personality changes, see or hear imaginary things, and become easily upset. Myth number three, it's normal for older people to become confused in the hospital. Not true. Infection, illness, and some medications can cause delirium. Recognizing these symptoms early and treating the cause helps more people return to their normal behavior. It is important that family and friends report any changes they notice to the medical team. Members of the healthcare team will ask questions often in order to test for signs of delirium and intervene early. Eating well, staying hydrated, participating in normal daily activities, and getting the right amount of sleep will help to prevent delirium. I took off pain pillars because I started hallucinating with the painkillers. Myth number four, if you feel tired, you should stay in bed. In reality, the more you stay in bed, the easier you will fatigue. And the more you fatigue, the less you'll be able to do. It can be a vicious cycle. Gentle, progressive activities and exercise will help to increase your strength and endurance. Gradually, you'll have more energy to do the things you enjoy. Of all age groups, the elderly have the most to gain by being active. Many studies have shown that the elderly can retain vigor, muscle tone, and a strong immune system in their later years through an exercise regimen. Even small amounts of exercise done regularly have a beneficial effect. Simple things like sitting at the edge of the bed to wash or eat meals can help you maintain your functional abilities in hospital. Mobilization in hospital is known to prevent delirium, functional decline, and falls. It improves breathing, sleeping, appetite, mood. Almost everything is better with a little exercise. There were parts of me that wanted to say, I don't feel like it, I don't want to, and they were very encouraging. And times it's like, leave me alone, but reality is they were doing the best thing for me to help me to get up and move. And the more I got up and moved, the better I began to feel. I felt more engaged with people. And even though your body is not 100%, it begins to feel like it's going in the right direction. Myth number five, it is better to let hospital staff do things for you. On the contrary, it is very important that you maintain your independence and normal routine in the hospital. Continuing simple activities like washing yourself, using the bathroom, Sitting up in a chair for meals and to talk with visitors will all ensure that you don't lose these functional abilities while you're recovering in hospital. And most importantly, it will ensure that you'll be able to do these things for yourself when you return home. Family members are encouraged to help maintain a normal daily routine in hospital. Ask your healthcare provider to talk to your family about the best ways to help while you're in hospital. This is also a good time for family members to gain hands-on experience and advice from the professionals so that everyone will be prepared for your discharge home. Someone else is bathing you, someone else is feeding you, someone else is doing everything for you and I just felt helpless. Um, when I finally was able to do one little thing, it was very exciting. Here are eight important things you can do to activate your recovery. Number one, keep a normal daily routine. When you wake up in the morning, get out of bed. Freshen up and dress in your own clothes if you can. As much as possible, do your activities of daily living on your own. Sit up for your meals and when you have visitors. Get out of your hospital room whenever you can and use the bathroom regularly. Number two, stay physically active. While in your bed or in a chair, move your legs and arms often to keep your joints loose. If you're able, walk a few times each day to build your strength. Use a walker or cane if you need to, and have someone walk with you at first. Try to walk a little further each time to help build your endurance. It's important to wear comfortable shoes or slippers with non-slip treads. And I walked a little bit, and I walked a bit more, and there's, there's only recovery comes from getting up and walking. Number three, eat well. It is much better to get out of bed to eat. Nobody likes crumbs in the bed. Let your nurse know if you cough when you are eating or drinking. This could be a sign of a problem with your ability to swallow certain foods. If you can't eat a full meal, try having several nutritious snacks throughout the day. Your body needs extra nutrients for good healing. 
Keep your mouth healthy by brushing your teeth or cleaning your dentures after you eat. You have to do it. You have to have nutrition. Without nutrition, you have nothing. Number four, stay hydrated. Ask your health care team how much fluid you should be drinking and what fluids are best for you. Keeping your body hydrated is especially important when you are recovering. The right amount of fluid in your body is necessary for your heart and kidneys to function properly and it also improves tissue healing. Number five, maintain healthy vision and hearing. You are more likely to enjoy doing activities if you can see and hear clearly and it's better for your personal safety. If you have glasses or a hearing aid, wear them while you are in hospital. Number six, stay mentally active. Being mentally active is another important step for improving your health in hospital. Have your family bring in pictures, magazines, music, puzzles, or other hobbies that interest you. If you're having trouble concentrating on a task, take a break and come back to it later. Play games, engage in conversation, and be aware of your surroundings. Encourage family and friends to visit, but short visits with only one or two people at a time are best. Spread out the visits during the day so that you can rest in between. Keep a positive attitude. I mean, at the end of the day, the, uh, you will get better. Number seven, keep a journal. Use a calendar or notebook to keep a record of your time in hospital. Write down the names of your visitors, keep track of your physical activities, and write down questions that you have for your healthcare team. Writing down a goal for each day and checking it off after you've achieved it will keep track of your progress. Now i got to get in the groove and get busy and start doing some exercises. I've got to do these exercises to help me get up mobile and I plan on going home. Number eight, maintain healthy sleep cycles. It is very easy to get off your normal sleep cycles when you're not feeling well in a hospital setting. It's important to stay awake during the day. Avoid drinking caffeine in the evening and stop drinking fluids about two hours before bedtime. A healthy sleep routine is a big plus in helping you stay active during the day. Talk to your healthcare team about any concerns you have. Ask them for tips they can share about things you can be doing to activate your recovery. Talk about the plan in hospital and when you will be ready to go home. Recovery from an illness or surgery requires hard work. It's an investment in your health. The more you do for yourself in hospital, the better you'll feel once you're home.